So let's start breaking down this tag lick. So a tag is something you'll play at the end of your solo. It's essentially an extra little statement that you might add to the end of your solo. So what you're doing there is essentially creating space for the vocalist. A lot of times in bluegrass music, maybe you'll end a solo and normally if you're counting it, the vocals would come in right away, maybe after one or two measures of back to G, for example, your root chord. But in practice, you might add three measures or four measures. You're essentially waiting for that vocalist to come in. Sometimes they just like to add a little bit of space. Sometimes they, maybe they in a jam session, maybe they can't remember, oh, what's the second verse? So that, you know, you're kind of just hanging out waiting for the vocalist to come in. So this happens all the time in bluegrass music. When you start listening for these tags, you'll hear them all the time. And you can also use these as little fills like in the middle of a verse as well. So let's start breaking it down. I'll show you a more major version and then I'll show you a couple bluesy variations you can do as well. Here we go. itself is actually just going to be two measures long and then I added a third measure for each of the licks basically to show you how to keep uh, get out of it and keep going okay so that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna start with the open third string and then the open first string and then we're gonna do a two five slide with a forward roll so I'm doing TIM with my right hand strings four three one so that's the first part of the lick Right here, I like to use my pinky. I'm gonna go up and do another forward roll. I got my pinky now on the fifth fret of the first string. Basically kind of thinking out of this G chord. That's why I like to use my pinky. So, because there's other licks that work out of that shape, you might slide up, something like that, right? So I just like to keep my fingers consistent myself. So that's why I like to use that finger. So we're gonna slide up. And then you hit the fifth string and then third string and then put your pinky down. So you have. So not too hard. Let's do it a couple more times. Really slow. second half of the lick we're going to do a forward verse roll. The other reason I like to use my pinky here is because now we've got to get down to the second fret on the first string and I'm using my index finger and I'm going to do a forward reverse roll strings five three one with that note down and then fifth string and then a classic backwards roll lick with the pull off. And then the third measure like I said is just fill we're going to do a pinch. But you could do another forward roll. You could really do whatever roll you want there. So the second half of the lick sounds like this. So on that backwards pull off lick, I'm using my index and middle finger. I've got my index finger on the second fret of the third string and I pull off. I like pulling back toward my palm. And I'm doing middle, index, thumb, middle. Measure two of the lick sounds like this on its own. You loop it. And then I just did thumb, third string, pinch the outside strings, fourth string, pinch. And those are quarter notes, so don't rush it. So the whole lick sounds like this.
to show you a couple variations. Let's just look at where I might use this lick. So I would use this, like I said, at the end of a solo. Usually if we're in the key of G, this lick is a G lick. I would use it coming back from a D chord. So that's the five chord back to a G, right? So if I do like a classic D lick, maybe something like this. Something like that, right? Now I do that lick. So that's a great little, again, it's a tag. So normally you'd have, so you might have two measures of G at the end here. Instead of just doing like a forward roll or a pinch, now I can add that little tag lick. Another way you can do it is if you want to get more advanced is basically do two tags in a row. So I broke down another really common tag. You can look on my website, Bluegrass Tag Ending Lick, I think it was called, and it's this lick. Something like that, or... Something like that. Or like that, right? It's just another tag, so you could do... Now add a double tag. Keep adding tags that's very common in bluegrass right you might just do multiple tags at the end of your solo especially if you're just having fun you know it's, it's like a jam session I'll do that all the time and it's just kind of fun you just basically keep tacking on little statements at the end of your solo to kind of keep it going that can be a fun way to kind of extend your solo and you're just hanging out on G waiting for the band to come back in so I'll, I'll demonstrate an example of that real quick and then we'll go over some more variations do extended tags I might do something like this the tag that we're just learning. So that was a triple tag, right? So then I added the classic. So you can see how you can start stringing these tags together. So now I could maybe do something like this. This time I flipped them. I, I did the tag that we're learning in this lesson and then the other one. Again, I would check out that other lesson so you get an ex example of how you can string these tags together. Very common in bluegrass to just, like I said, add these tags to the end of your solo. Once you start listening for them, you'll hear them all the time. The other spot you could use this is any section where you have two measures of G, right? You could also use this as a backup lick. <laughs> lick as well. So a couple variations on that lick. I also like starting with a pinch like that, like a power. I call it kind of a pow. Uh, I think of like Ron Stewart or Terry Bauckham or Jason Davis, guys like that that play with a lot of drive will use stuff like this a lot. I personally like doing it with my index and middle finger by right hand. I'm just hitting the third string and the first string at the same time. Kind of a pow. And then the lick is basically the same. The only difference is right here I do just a quarter note on that second fret just to let that pop out a little bit more and then I don't do the pull off on the way back down just made the lick a little easier and then a roll you can see how you could end it with something different right so now you have okay so if you want to use a pinch one thing you got to remember though is if you use a D lick at the end so let's say I use this lick Normally that lick might end with my middle finger, right? Of my right hand. Then I can't do that pinch because I, I would be breaking a rule and doing a double middle finger, which at high speeds would be tricky. So what I need to do is make sure that the last note of my D lick, I can just end it with my thumb with a quarter note. Now that frees me up to do that pinch. So you might need to reverse engineer some of these and make sure if you want to do that pinch that you just make sure that preceding lick, whatever you're doing, doesn't end with your middle finger, right? So if you, even if you're doing a lick like this, right, that would kind of end with your middle finger, but you could do, right? 
you can always just take out that middle finger at the end. And now you can go. So that's just a variation, right? Example of the, the thing I was just talking about, right, is if you put those three measures together, you couldn't loop it because that forward roll at the end ends with your middle finger, so you can't start that pinch again. That's a perfect example. The other thing you can do is if you want to end with your middle finger, just take out the pinch and just play the third string on its own, either with your index finger of your right hand or your thumb, right? So you'd have... started with a single thumb or take it out and then pinch. I personally like the pinch. I think it adds a lot of power. So I just kind of make sure I take out that last note, make sure it's not my middle finger. Same would apply with your index finger, you know, but you don't end as many licks in scrub style with your index finger. So you won't encounter that quite as much, but just remember that, okay? So another way to do it is, let's make it bluesier. So if you if you substitute the second fret for the third fret, it'll become bluesier. Like that, right? Same lick. And then the second half is like a bluesy lick you could use in a song like Pretty Polly or Wild Bill Jones. And then pinch. So we have... And then lastly, a more advanced version would be this. Starts the same way. And then this time we do a forward roll, uh, actually a forward reverse roll with a 3-2 pull off on the first string. And then kind of into like a Tony Rice style lick. And then pinch. There I use my uh, first finger and ring finger on three and two, and I get my first finger down first. So I go. See how that finger's down? I roll forward, and then I go. And that one I pull off the, the fretboard. And then a forward uh, three five slide. Just filling it out with a lick there at the end. So the whole lick sounds like this. That one you can loop, so you have... variations on the lick starting with two major ones and then two bluesy ones so obviously try both and see which fits the context of the song but again this is a lick that you can use in a lot of spots you can use it for any two measures of backup but like I said I would try and use it at the end of your solo so after a D chord the five chord coming back to G or if you know some other tag licks see if you can extend this one on and do a double tag or a triple tag like I talked about this is a really good way to top off your solo with an extra little statement. All right, hopefully that helps you out. Good luck and keep picking. You got this.